plenteous in mercy unto all them that call upon thee. Let's sing this song together, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. If you know it, just sing it out with all your heart this morning. Come thou fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious sonnet, sung by flaming tongues above. Praise the mount I'm fixed upon it, mount of thy redeeming love. On that second verse, here I raise mine Ebenezer, Hither by thy help I'm come, and I hope by thy good pleasure safely to arrive at home. Jesus sought me when a stranger, wandering from the fold of God, he to rescue me from danger interposed his precious blood. Oh, to grace, how great a debtor daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy goodness like a fetter Bind my wandering heart to Thee. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, O oh, take and seal it. Seal it for Thy courts above. And pastor is going to come back up and he's going to make just a few announcements this morning. All right. So a couple things here. Uh, we're going to pray in just a moment here. I do want to just, we, I think we all got the church cast. Brother Neil's brother is sick with the coronavirus. Brother Neil, can you nod your head? Is that correct? All right. So please pray uh, for Brother Neil's uh, brother. And I know how many others just with, I can see most hands have maybe someone that you know who's sick, possibly with the coronavirus. All right, so we got a couple hands. And so let's go ahead and let's pause and pray. Um, every morning I've been checking the many people who have passed away and I've been praying for these folks. And I know the number is close to 14,000 now. And so let's pray for the many families who have been greatly impacted uh, with this coronavirus. All right, so let's, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, I thank you that no matter where we meet, that you are especially there in this gathering of people together. And Lord, um, I just pray that you would be lifted up and exalted in our hearts this morning, that our focus would be upon you. There are so many things around us that are changing, changing not just daily or weekly, but changing hourly. And Lord, we look to you and we want to thank you that you are the rock and we can stand firmly upon you. So, Lord, I pray for those in our midst here in this parking lot that have um, maybe extra burdens and struggles, uh, maybe job related. Lord, I pray that you'd help them during this time of difficulty, that you would just give grace and strength and wisdom to them. Lord, I pray for those who we know who are uh, suffering from sickness and specifically from the coronavirus, Lord, I pray that you would give healing and help, help our nation. Lord, I pray for the almost 14,000 people, uh, the, their families who have passed away. Lord, I just pray that you would help these many, many people all around the world to see that you are the answer and that they would, they, that they would have their hope in you and that they would put their trust in you. I pray, Lord, that this would be a reminder to the world that we are but dust. And I pray that we would humble ourselves before you and seek your face. Renew us and revive us. Help us, Lord, to walk with you during this time. In Jesus' name, 
Amen. All right, just a couple of things uh, here this morning. I, I know that this is all new. This is all different. And so there are challenges. And so I, I just want to say thank you uh, for being here and for trying to be a part of this service. And I thank you also for respecting uh, distance between you and the other family groups and even the cars around you. So I want to just thank you for making this effort this morning. Please be careful. I've been praying um, and, I, and I want to encourage all the church family. Just pray that the Lord would protect us as a church family uh, and that the Lord would keep us healthy and focused upon him. All right. I just want to let you know if you are not on ChurchCast. Now, I'm assuming that you're here because of ChurchCast. All right. So this. But if you know someone who's not been getting things, please let me know. It's just very important that we don't leave anybody out on ChurchCast. Even if you want to add a phone, let's say the, the husband is on it and the wife isn't or the wife is on ChurchCast and the husband or something like that. Please just let me know and we can add you to ChurchCast. Also, I just want to reiterate this. I sent this out a couple days ago, but especially for our seniors, uh, 60 years old and older, if you need someone to go get groceries, all right, to go hunt down some toilet paper or something like that, um, I am willing. I know Pastor Nick would, would love to be a help in that uh, situation as well. So please, um, if you need us, we, we want you to stay at home and stay safe, all right? So please just know that that is a true offer. And I appreciate uh, the one who, who allowed me to serve them here this week. And it would just be an honor and blessing to serve you in that capacity. So please call me. Don't think twice. I've also been asked several times about how do we give, all right? And so that's a good heart. And I just want to say there is a box over here. Uh, but uh, And there's envelopes and everything. There's sanitizer. Please be very careful as you touch things to always sanitize before and after. But I do want to encourage you that you would give online. That would be the safest way. All right. So you go to www. Is that three W's? www.yourcalvary, C-A-L-V-A-R-Y dot net. And when you go there, you just go, um, it's on the far right hand side and there's a little tab and it's super, super easy. So if you pay a bill online, it's even easier than paying your bill online. I believe it's very safe and secure. And so I just wanna encourage you that that would be the way that you give during the next few weeks, all right? So that would be a blessing. Um, let's see, also, I think, I don't really have to say this, but I wanna say this to keep everybody on the same page. Uh, pretty much everything that we were planning over the next few weeks is postponed, all right? So, uh, for example, this Saturday, uh, the safety and security meeting where we're going to shoot some guns, that's been postponed. Uh, the missions emphasis time, uh, we're still trying to figure out how to do that. But, of course, the international fellowship meal has been postponed, and we probably will postpone that emphasis maybe for a week or two. So I just want to let you know. Everything's changing on a daily and hourly basis. And so uh, I just want to also remind you two truths. God is in control and God is good. God is in control and God is good. All right, Pastor Nick has a couple of details to give and then we'll continue to sing. All right, just to add something to his uh, giving online, I stood up here, if those of you who saw me stand down here in the corner for just about a minute or two, I was putting my tithes online. It's very simple. It didn't even take me two minutes. Um, and you can even leave comments if you want to break stuff up, um, if you want to give to specific missionaries or something like that. There's a comment box when you pay. So it's very easy and very simple. Um, tonight, when we're live streaming the service, we're going to send out a link over the ChurchCast system. Um, that will give you the ability to get online, gather your family, um, open up, whether it's a laptop or whether it's um, your phone, whatever, whatever you choose to do. Maybe you have a smart TV where you can pull us up on your TV. I would encourage you to get rid of all distractions. Um, maybe make sure your, your pet has something to do. Maybe uh, put your phones on silent. Because remember, we're not all gathered together in one place. So distractions are going to be very easy uh, to, to pop up. Right. So I want to encourage you, get your Bible, um, get your family, and, and sit down and be prepared to worship with us tonight. We're going to have the live stream open at 6 tonight, um, Lord willing, and all technology goes well. Um, that's our plan to... Uh, that's our plan for, for this evening's service. So we will send out a link that you can open up uh, on the ChurchCast system. All right. Um, we're going to sing another song. 
Um, hymn 345, what, uh, what a friend we have in Jesus. And I'm going to find it now because my pages have turned. What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. I want to encourage you in John 15, 15, Jesus himself says, but I have called you friends. He has called us friends. He, has, he called his disciples friends because he cared about them. He wanted them to know what was going on. And you know what? We might not know what's going on in the world around us, but we do know that we have a friend in Jesus Christ. And when you're at home, uh, maybe when you're working from home or you're alone in your vehicle, just understand you're really not alone. Jesus is there with you and, and he wants to encourage you. So talk to him this week. Talk to him during this time of quarantine that we're in. Just ask the Lord to help you, encourage you, encourage your family, encourage your pastor, uh, and just talk to the Lord this week. We're going to sing the song, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful who will all our sorrows share? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Are we weak and heavy laden? Cumbered with the load of care. Precious Savior, still our refuge. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Do thy friends despise, forsake thee. Take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms he'll take and shield thee. Thou wilt find a solace there. The last hymn we're going to sing this morning is God Leads His Dear Children Along. God Leads Us Along. Before we, before we sing this, I'd like to read Psalm 31, verse 3. The Bible says, For thou art my rock and my fortress. Therefore, for thy name's sake, lead me and guide me. The psalmist knew that he could look to the Lord for his guidance, for his leading. And I just want to encourage you during this time, realize that God is still our shepherd. He is still leading us. He is still guiding us. He is still in control. He is still on the throne. So trust in him and follow him during this time. Amen. We're just going to sing this first and last verse of God leads us along. In shady green pastures so rich and so sweet, God leads his dear children along. Where the water's cold flow bathes the weary one's feet, God leads his dear children along. Some through the waters, some through the flood, some through the fire, but all through the blood. 
Some through great sorrow, but God gives a song in the night season and all the day long. Away from the mire and away from the clay, God leads his dear children along. Away up in glory, eternity's day, God leads his dear children along. Some through the water, some through the flood, some through the fire, but all through the blood. Some through great sorrow, but God gives a song in the night season and all the day long. All right, if you have your Bibles, I hope you have your Bibles, please turn to James chapter 4. And I know that we are fighting, it's all different, a lot of distractions, but my prayer here this morning that the Lord would speak to our hearts and even in this unique situation and the unique setting of events that God would help us to focus. So uh, these, these phones, all right, I know that everybody can play on them. During this time, I encourage you to just put them away or open up your Bible app, all right? And let's go ahead and let's stay together uh, this morning. All right, James chapter 4 is our passage, and we're going to pray and ask God to help us. All right, in the very back, can you hear me loud and clear back there? All right, very good. All right, let's go ahead and let's pray. Heavenly Father, you are good. You are still on your throne. We want to thank you for these many folks who've come and who are sitting here in these cars. And I pray that even though we're in a different situation and everything is different, that our hearts would focus upon you and that we would be hungry for your truth and that you would change us. And sometimes when the circumstances of life uh, are filled with trials and struggles and I guess just different things, sometimes we pay attention a little bit better. And I pray that we would pay attention to your word, that we would hunger for your truth, and Lord, that we would not waste this time, but that we would use this time seeking you first. In Jesus' name, amen. Who would have thought, who would have thought that uh, we'd be here doing this today? I'd say that if I had mentioned this three weeks ago, all of you would say, <laughs> that will never happen. Now, I mean, this, this would have been crazy, a crazy thought just three weeks ago, just four weeks ago. Where will we be tomorrow? We don't know. Where will our country be tomorrow? We don't know. We hope the good, right? And we know that God is good, but we don't know the facts tomorrow. We just don't know. What will our stock market look like tomorrow. You know, if you watch the media for like five or 10 minutes, they're talking, of course, about the coronavirus and the stock market and the economy. And these are the things that are just being said over and over and over again. And if you have stocks right now, if you have a, an IRA right now, uh, things are going down probably. All right. For you. And probably 25, 30%, 50%. And you say, I would like to have an IRA. I would like to have an account. Right now, we're not losing anything, right? For those who don't have any money there. But we just don't know. And our world doesn't know. And we thought we knew. We thought this was going to be 2020, a great economic year for America. But things have changed very quickly. Where will my job be tomorrow? We don't know. Where will we be tomorrow? We don't know. What's your plans tomorrow? Get ready to be flexible, right? Because our plans are changing over and over and over again. What are you going to accomplish tomorrow? We don't know. We just don't know. And to that reality, I want to bring to your attention James chapter 4 and verses 13 through 17. And I just want to say, as I was just meditating, I just feel like this passage was heavy on my heart the last few days. And as I was meditating on this, 
this truth has always been here. Always. But all of a sudden, it's like the application has bubbled afresh to the surface. And I think we can pay attention to this truth in a way that maybe perhaps we weren't paying attention. Because the truth is two weeks ago, just two weeks ago, I was pretty confident as I was scheduling out uh, the missions revival and homecoming and the events of the summer. And I had things lying up and I was just like, okay, God, I'm excited for the next six months. And then a week later, things are being postponed. Things are being rescheduled. Things are changing. And some of you, you had vacation plans. You didn't go. Some of you had job plans and they didn't happen. Life didn't happen the way you expected. James chapter 4, verse 13 through 17 says this. Go to now, ye that say today or tomorrow, we will go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain. Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. For that ye ought to say, I'm fighting the wind here. For that ye ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. But now you rejoice in your boastings. All such rejoicing is evil. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. You know, these, are, uh, these, these four verses talk about presumptuous plans, or you could say overconfident scheduling. And what I find incredibly, inter incredibly interesting here is that our everyday thinking, for most of us, is laid out here. I mean, if you are a businessman, if you work for someone else, uh, this is the normal routine of life. These are the normal things that we discuss, that we think through. The time, today or tomorrow, or maybe next week, or maybe a month from now. The place, in verse 13, a certain city, a designated city. The length, a length of time, a year or so, a plan. Here's the plan, to do business there. And what's the purpose? to make some money. Those are the plans laid out in verse 13. All right, there's a place, there's a plan, and they're gonna make some profit. All of us make plans. Aren't plans good to make? Say plans are good to make. In fact, even in the Bible, it talks about the ant. Even the ant makes plans for the winter time. Uh, the Bible talks about how if somebody is gonna build a tower what do you do before you build that tower? You sit down and you think about it and make sure that you have enough money to do what you are planning to do and make sure that you have, you could say a contingency plan. What's wrong with that? The problem is not the plan. Now there, don't get me wrong, there are some evil plans out there. I mean, that's the truth. There are some truly evil plans out there and I hope you don't have evil plans out there and I guess I'm assuming this morning that your plans are not evil the problem specifically is not always the plan the problem is your thinking it's your attitude it's your heart behind the plan the problem is you think you are in control of tomorrow the problem is we think we are in control of tomorrow and that's presumptuous and presumptuous is defined as taking liberties. It's an arrogance. It's an overconfidence. Again, there's nothing wrong with the plan laid out in James chapter four. There's nothing wrong with making plans. There's nothing wrong with saying, okay, I'm gonna go to this city. There's nothing wrong with planning to make a profit. Of course, the focus on money, a love of money is the problem, right? It's the root of all evil, but money itself, it's just a tool. We have to make profit, right? In order to feed our families. And so again, that's not the problem. What's wrong is the attitude. It's the thinking. It's ultimately the heart, the mind, will, and emotions, who we really are. It's a problem there. I want you to skip down there in verse 16. It says, um, but now you rejoice in your boastings. All such rejoicing is evil. In other words, you're boasting about something that you don't have true control of. And that boasting is evil. Again, here's the problem. Here's the core. We think, we think we're in control. But then a problem happens. 
then a situation happens like the coronavirus or a tornado or a hurricane or a death in the family. And all of a sudden we wake up. I hope we wake up and realize that we are not in control. God is in control. And can I say he's also good and he has good plans. And the problem is that subtle, my plans will prove successful. I am the master of my destiny. I am in charge of my life and my success. In verse 13, it presumes that we will be alive tomorrow. But we don't know that. It presumes that we can make happen whatever plans and whatever timing. But we just don't know. It presumes that we have the capacity to achieve whatever we conceive. What could possibly go wrong? And right now we're sitting in a situation where there's a lot of things that are going wrong. And you could get sick tomorrow. You could get in a car accident. You could get a call tonight or an email which tells you that all of a sudden your essential job is no longer essential and you just got laid off for a week or two or three weeks. We have someone in our church family who that happened to. All of a sudden, they don't have a paycheck. They're, they, they don't have those opportunities right now. And you might say, well, if you're a good planner, you will always have a plan B. You'll always have a plan C. That's called a contingency plan. Who's got a contingency plan now, right? The plan keeps changing every single day. And I think we need to be careful here, especially for those of us, and I think there's many you know, successful people here who have a plan and who are good at carrying out that plan, be very careful of even the subtle pride uh, of just thinking, well, I'm gonna make better plans. And we can even get ensnared in the, you know, I'm gonna make better and better plans and so that my plans don't go astray. I'm gonna have plan B and plan C and plan F and plan Z. Again, what if your plans all collapse? And ultimately, remember, we are not in control. The problem is our attitude, is our thinking, it's the heart. Who is really in control? So there's the problem. We think that we're in control. Here's the reality in verse 14. Your life is a vanishing vapor. Now, I know that's not really an over pleasant thought, but it's reality. And that reality is in verse 14. It says, whereas ye know not, or the idea is you don't realize what the truth is, what shall be on the morrow? You just don't know. We think we know. We think we're prepared, but we just don't know. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. Your life is like the mist. It's like the fog over a, a river. And the instant the sun's rays hit that, hits that mist and fog, it just disappears. So short. That's our lives. And you cannot, I cannot guarantee our next heartbeat. We are being reminded daily of our mortality during this time. It is appointed unto men once to die and after this, the judgment. So the plan in verse 13 forgets many truths. It forgets our ignorance. We don't know what's going to happen. It forgets our frailty, our frailty. Do we really think that we are the master? It forgets our dependence. And I think as Americans specifically, how quickly we forget how dependent we are upon God. And I, I think this is something that we do on accident. It's not like, I don't think anybody in your car here this morning, and I don't think you on purpose intend to leave God out of your plans. It's that we just do it because we are intentionally a little proud or a lot proud and unintentionally a little arrogant, accidentally leaving God out of our plans because we think we know. We think we have the wisdom and resources to make the right call in this situation. We don't intend to rely on our own abilities, but often that's what we end up doing. We must daily understand so many times in the Bible, we are told these truths. Don't boast about tomorrow. Why? For thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. That's Proverbs chapter 27. 
We plan, Proverbs 16 says, but the Lord directs the steps. Who is in charge? Who is in control? I love the passage where scripture reminds us that the horse is ready for battle. And it's like, you know, this king or this ruler is set up to wage a war. He's made some plans. But the battle, the results are in whose hands? God's hands. God is omniscient. He knows all things. We aren't. God is omnipotent. He is power over all things. We aren't. God is omnipresent. He is everywhere all at the same time. And it is presumptuous. It is pretentious. It is arrogant. It is boastful. It is downright proud to think that we are the masters of our own fate. We are reminded time and time again, especially in circumstances like this, God is in control. If we plan like we are in control, then we are guilty of presumptuous plans. What is your life? It's so short. It's so short, and you never know when you will draw your last breath. Jesus told a parable which has the same sobering truth in Luke chapter 12 and verse 16 through 20. I'm going to read it. And Jesus says, the ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. And he thought within himself saying, what shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. And he said, this will I do. This is the plan. I will pull down my barns and I will build greater. And there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. Wouldn't that be a nice problem to have? The bank isn't big enough to hold all of your money. So I'm going to build a new bank. I'm going to build new barns to hold my wealth. Verse 19, and I will say to my soul, soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, thou fool, this night shall be required of thee. Then whose shall those things be which thou hast provided? This rich man had forgotten many things, but two of them is he forgot his mortality. And he also forgot who was really in charge. It's not us. It's not our brilliant plans. It's not our brilliant plan B or plan C or plan F or plan Z. Who is in charge? Do we really believe that God is in charge or do we think that we are in charge? So what's the solution? All right. So the problem is these presumptuous plans, this whole thinking of that I'm in control. The reality is your life is a vanishing vapor. You're not in control. We like to think we're in control, but we're not. And so what's the solution? And we find the solution in verse 15 of James chapter 4, verse 15, which says, For that ye ought to say, this should be your thinking. This should be the way you walk through things and make your plans. For that ye ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this. Or that Again, the solution, I know I've said this a couple times, the solution is not that the plan is bad or that you should make better plans, although that's possible. You know, the solution is not, well, I'm not going to make any money. Well, you have to make money in order to provide for your families. The solution is not to try to make a better plan, to have an emergency, an emergency plan, a contingency plan. Of course, you should make plans. Of course, you should make the best plans you can possibly make. But the solution is you ought to say, if the Lord will. And by the way, that's not saying that you make your plan, whatever you want, and then you wave magic words over it, Lord willing. That's not the idea of this passage. It's not some magic potion words that all of a sudden make your plans okay. The whole idea is that this is now a new way of thinking. It's a new attitude. It's a new focus. It's an understanding that God is in control. And when you realize that God is in control, all of a sudden, Okay, God, what do you want? All right, Lord willing, if you will, if this is your plan. You know, the difference here is truly believing and then living out that belief that God is in control. That's number one. But secondly, submitting to the God who is in control. So our response, if the Lord wills, it shows something here. This is what it shows. Humility. It's not about me. It's not about what I want. It shows submission. Okay, God, what do you want? What plans do you want me to carry out? 
It shows dependence. And this is where so often we err. God, I can truly do nothing worthwhile without your help. And what I love about the scripture this morning is just very practical. You know, if you're thinking, okay, when it comes to spiritual things, I'm going to check in with God. Wait a second here. That's not even the context of this passage, right? It's actually talking to a business person. It's talking to someone who is in everyday life making plans and probably, let's hope, good plans. And so whether th this is a passage for businessmen or employees, employers, subcontractors, husbands, wives, sons, daughters, it's about our, pl our plans tomorrow and it's about our human tendency for this presumptuousness, this, this self-confidence, this self-independence, this thinking, and it's subtle sometimes, that we are in control. Humans make plans, but God determines the progress of our plans. He even sets the span of our days. And this is why we trust the Lord. This is why we lay out any and every plan before him. This is why we die to ourselves and die to our plans to say, okay, God, I might have had different ideas, but I'm going to die to myself. I don't want to live according to your plan. And if you truly live this, you know, maybe whatever you're planning for tomorrow, it might be a good plan. Maybe that plan would change. But again, it's not specifically the plans. Of course, you shouldn't make evil plans. It's your heart. It's your thinking. It's your belief behind your plans. Who is in control. It's not me. And so the attitude of our heart should be, Lord willing. Lord, are you willing? What plans do you want? You know, we have several great examples in scripture of people who submitted to God's plans, even when they were tough. And maybe that's just the reality. Sometimes God's plans for us, they are tough. Remember Joseph? I don't think Joseph had planned on getting thrown into a pit. I don't think Joseph had planned on being you know, sold into slavery and then for doing what was right, being cast into prison. But towards the end of Joseph's life, this is what he says. To the people who did a lot of evil to him, he said, you, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. In other words, God is in control of even that situation. And God is trustworthy. He's the one in charge. Paul in Acts 21, he's very careful and he just steps back and he says, the Lord's will be done. His plan. Whatever God wants. Jesus in Matthew chapter 26 and verse 42, facing the brutality and suffering physically and spiritual suffering on the cross, he says, your will be done done. The Lord's prayer says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. So what are your plans? You know, I just you know, have to mention it because of the mortality of the day that we live. We are reminded that we are but flesh. What's your plan for eternity? Now, there's a lot of people who might say, well, I'm going to think about eternity later. The problem is, you don't know. None of us know if we have later. Some, some people might say, well, I have a different plan. But God is very clear. There are, there's only one way. There's only one truth. There's only one plan in order for you to have eternal life. And that is through Jesus Christ. And I know I'm looking at people who I, I see every, pretty much every Sunday. I just want to remind you, this is a time to really consider where will I spend eternity? We don't know. But we do know who does know. And there is one way. And the way to have eternal life is through Jesus Christ. Call out to Jesus Christ. If you don't know him, call out. He is the only right plan for eternity. You know, you, uh, you may not know. Well, you thought you knew about marriage and family. But you know what's important? to just humble ourselves and to submit to God's will in our marriage, to God's will in our family. What about your future plans? 
You know, as I was preparing this message, as I was talking to Pastor Nick even yesterday, uh, trying to prepare for several hours of kind of the plan and trying to set up uh, live streaming for tonight, um, and we just just considering this passage, and I just I shared with him is like we don't know, and even as I thought through this passage and planned on preaching this, I don't even know if I'm going to stand up here today, right? I didn't know who's going to be here today, and so we have to any plan that we make. Might be a good plan. I think this was a good plan. It's so good to see everybody in this parking lot. Well, we have to be careful to say, okay, God, whatever your will is, submitting to the truth that God is in control. If the Lord wills, if the Lord wills, here is the plan. It shows a hard attitude of humility. It's not about me. It's not about what I want. It shows a a heart attitude of submission. Okay, God, I want what you want. It shows a heart attitude of dependence. God, I can truly do nothing worthwhile without your help. You know, we forget things very quickly, but I think that there would be one very good thing that could come out of this coronavirus. I think there are many good things, even, in, even though there is a lot of suffering and a lot of pain. But one good thing is is a heart change of who is in control, even of our daily plans. Who is in control? God is in control. And we need to humble ourselves to God's plan. We need to submit to God's plan and put our dependence upon Him every day and today and in the next few months as we face this coronavirus situation. So these are five truths here to take home today. Five truths. You've already heard three of them. Number one, humility. Humble yourself before your God and ask him for wisdom. James chapter one, verse five. God loves to give wisdom even about your plans. Number two, submission. Submit to God's will. Maybe some of you are fighting God's will, God's plan. Submit to God's will. His plan is so much better. Submit to God's will. Submit to God's plan. Submit to, here's the big one. Submit to God's timing. So often we might want good things, but we want it in our timing. We have to submit to God's timing. Dependence. Refuse to become arrogant and confident about my plans, but depend upon the Lord. Lord willing. Lord willing. The fourth truth, I want to go back to James chapter 4 and read it. James chapter 4 and verse 17 says, Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him... It is sin. Here's the fourth truth, really simple. Plan to do good. What's your plan for tomorrow? Lord willing, God is in control. Being humble and submissive and dependent upon God. What is your plan for tomorrow? Laying out that before the Lord. Do you have a plan to do good? A plan to do good. Isn't that a good plan? And who defines good? God does. Plan to do good tomorrow. And maybe uh, something very specific in whatever situation, circumstance that you have, maybe right now would be a good time to consider this prayerfully. Okay, God, during this time, during this coronavirus, during this time um, when, when people are glued to the media and, and very focused on the situation, what good can I do? How can I help someone else during this time? I think, I mean, we need to be cautious. We need to keep our social distance, all right? We don't need to spread this virus. But there are many ways that we need to do good. And let's really be thinking about that. What plan before the Lord, humbly, what good can I do for someone else during this time? And then lastly, Everything that I do must bring God glory. Number five is know that whatever you achieve, whatever your plans that are successful, it is because of God. And you might say, well, no, I made that plan. No, oh, wait a second here. God gave you your brain. He led you. If you were successful, it's because God allowed it, because God is in control. And so as we make these plans, humble ourselves before our great God. Ask him for wisdom. Submit to him, his plan, his will, his time. Depend upon him. Refuse to become arrogant and self-confident. 
do good. Plan to do good. We are to do good works, not to save us, but because we love our God and because we love one another. Let's do good. I know that whatever good is accomplished, whatever good plan, all thanks and all praise and all glory to our great God who is in control and who's good. So I have a prayer for all of us, and I just want to encourage you in your car to really think about this and just, I'm going to give you, you know, like 30 seconds or a minute just to pause and to respond. Here's the prayer on my heart. And you can tweak this according to your own heart and the own application. Same truth, but applying it in your heart. Say, God, I need your help today, but I need your help for tomorrow to plan my day, to plan it well, to plan it according to your will. Help me to humble myself, submit myself, and depend upon you. Help me to do good. And help me to give all glory to you, the God who is still on his throne. So as we hear this message, will we just respond in really humble prayer? No matter where you're at, maybe you're living this out. I think we can always grow in this area. But let's make sure that we truly, not just with our words, but with our heart and our attitude, Lord, may your will be done and not my own. Let's just pause, and in the quietness of the day, let's pause before the Lord.